Hello and welcome to question 7a. Now question 7a is on linear law or linearization of graphs. Whenever I come across linearization of graphs, I always feel that this is such a smart idea. Because let's look at this question, what's happening? So in this question, you're given an equation. And this equation looks very bad because this is something that I do not know how to sketch or I have no idea what it looks like. You might know one year later on when we study curve sketching in junior college or maybe some of the higher, uh, more advanced math modules in poly. But for now, this is simply something that we do not know. But we can turn it into a straight line. How? How do we do that? Right. Let me show you how difficult that actually is, that idea. Because I went ahead and plot in decimals, right? the equation that we're given and what it looks like over here. Uh, this technical name is called a hyperbola. Right. What it basically looks like is an inverted C on the left and a C on the right. We're going to turn this thing, a graph that has two parts, into one single straight line. How does that happen, right? So I always feel linearization right, or linear law is such a good and smart idea. And it's actually quite simple. So let me show you what's going on. Let's take this equation that we're given. right? And I'm going to make y square the subject of the formula. right? So what's next is if I want y squared to be subject of formula, maybe I want to get this fraction to be alone. I'll move the 1 to this side. So it's like x squared, p squared, minus 1. So we have x squared, p squared, x squared over p squared minus 1 is equals to this fraction over here. Next, if I want y squared to be subject of the formula, oops, maybe I need to multiply by q squared over 3. Multiplying by q squared over 3 will give me y squared. Multiply by q squared over 3, q squared over 3. And if you look carefully, we have actually arrived at a straight line right, uh, form. Because if I let's say capital Y uh, be Y squared and capital X be X squared, then what we have here is just Y equals to M X plus C. Right? Pretty crazy if you think about it. Right? We just turn a crazy looking graph into a straight line. And let's read the question for some clues. It says that this line passes through the point 25, 1 and has a gradient of 1 over 15. Hmm. So that means my M this is 1 over 15. Okay, and if I substitute x equals to 25, y equals to 1, this equation will be true. So let me first do this one. Let this be 1 over 15. So if you do that over here, you end up with 5q squared equals to p squared. And I'm going to stop that because this is an equation with two unknowns. To solve an equation with two unknowns, you need another equation, right? And that other equation comes from substituting. Uh, x equals to 25, y equals to 1. If you substitute that in, into here, don't forget that this is actually just 1 over 15, right? You can solve for q. Solving for q will give you q equals to plus minus square root of 2. Plus minus square root of 2, right? Or rather, q squared is equal to 2. Now, if you substitute this back into our original equation here, then you get 5 times 2 equals to p squared. So p squared is equal to 10, p equals to plus minus square root of 10. And that is the answer for part 1. q equals to plus minus square root of 2, p equals to plus minus square root of 10. Alright, now let's move on to part 2. Part 2 is just a simple substitution. In part 2, we are being asked the values of x when y equals to square root 2 over 5. And I'm going to use the y square equals to mx square plus c form. Yeah. So carrying on from earlier on, y squared equals to 1 over 15 x squared minus q squared over 3. But from part 1, I already worked out what is q, right? q is plus minus root 2, which means q squared is 2, right? If q squared is 2, then this is just minus 2 thirds. So let's rewrite that. And now let's substitute y equals to square root 2 over 5. If y equals square root 2 over 5, then y squared equals to 2 over 5. Then I'm getting this equation over here. Now, I don't know about you, but I hate to deal with fractions. So I'm going to multiply throughout by 15. That would eliminate all the denominators. Right? Multiply by 15, this becomes a 6. This is a x square. This is a negative 10. x square equals to 16. x equals to plus minus 4. That's it. That is 7a. I hope you found this helpful, and I'll see you in 7b.